Are you looking for some tips on how to successfully keep a SPS dominant reef tank? If so, stay tuned. Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Okay, so let's start off with a little primer about SPS or small polyp stony corals. These corals are typically found in the shallow parts of our world's coral reefs in areas with intense light and turbulent water. They have calcium carbonate skeletons and a thin layer of tissue with polyps. SPS can be very demanding corals to keep in a captive reef tank. Not only do they require the strong lighting and flow they receive in nature, but they also need proper calcium and alkalinity supplementation. Having either a calcium reactor or a doser to replenish the calcium and alkalinity sucked up by the SPS is vitally important to having success with these corals. I have used both of these methods with a lot of success. Two-part alkalinity and calcium solutions, such as the ESB Bionic buffer system, are popular since they are ready made and can easily be adjusted to target specific calcium and alkalinity levels. Calcium reactors are also very popular. Once dialed in, these units allow you to set it and forget it. The pH of the effluent coming out of a calcium reactor is low, so it can help to have a second chamber to absorb some of the excess CO2 that can lower the pH. It may also be necessary to boost pH with a cock reactor. Cock reactors use cockwasser in conjunction with RODI water that is either gravity fed or forced through the unit via a separate dosing pump. The cockwasser and RODI water need to be mixed by either a pump or a stirrer inside the reactor. Why is low pH not a good thing for SPS and other types of corals? Excessively low pH will make it harder for these organisms to deposit calcium carbonate skeletons, so levels should be maintained in the 7.8 to 8.4 range. Another thing to consider are nutrient levels, which should be elevated to avoid starving SPS. I recommend maintaining nitrates between 2.5 to 10 parts per million and phosphates in the 0.03 to 0.07 part per million range. It is also critical to have stability for parameters such as salinity, nitrate, magnesium, and calcium. Stable phosphate is important as well, but perhaps most important for SPS is keeping alkalinity at a consistent level. Any swings with this parameter over a short period of time usually spells trouble. Stable parameters equals happy SPS. Now let's circle back to lighting. As I mentioned in the beginning, SPS requires strong lighting and will do best under T5s, metal halides, or LEDs when given the proper PAR. PAR stands for photosynthetically available radiation and represents the light intensity produced by aquarium lighting. A meter can be used to determine PAR levels at different depths inside a tank. SPS will be happiest when PAR is in the 250 to 350 range. In my years of experience in keeping SPS dominated reef tanks, I've had a lot of success using metal halides with supplemental T5 lighting. But I am an old school reefer. A lot of reefers rely solely on T5s and have awesome looking tanks, while many others use LEDs. LEDs have gained popularity for a few reasons. One plus is they do not emit a lot of heat, making it less likely that you'll need a chiller and they'll typically use less electricity. LED bulbs also have a very long lifespan versus metal halide and T5 bulbs, so extra money will be saved on replacing bulbs down the line. Additionally, high output LED lights now have the giddy up to grow SPS really well. LED lighting also has less spillage with more of the light focused on corals versus the back or sides of the tank. Although metal halide and T5 users point to this as a disadvantage given the better light spread produced by reflectors in those light fixtures. But LEDs have improved on this front with the advent of diffusers to help spread light. Additionally, LED lights are dimmable, making it easy to adjust the output of LEDs to reproduce different types of lighting conditions, such as a bright or cloudy day. Also, you have the ability to easily change the color spectrum, giving reef keepers many different options to play with. The upfront cost for LED fixtures can be high, but I know one old school reefer, me, who is willing to give them a try. Another key factor to keeping a thriving SPS dominated reef tank is having a lot of water movement via strong circulation, and there are a number of reasons why. Number one is to avoid dead spots and to keep detritus, 
which is dead organic matter, such as fragments of dead organisms or fish waste, from collecting at the bottom, which helps to keep nitrates and phosphates from building up in the tank. Accumulation of these elements can lead to algae outbreaks. Strong flow also helps to deliver food and nutrients to the corals. Besides strong flow, random flow is also beneficial and can be achieved by using a pump such as the Vortec MP40 from Ecotech. The random flow from the Sora pump is great for SPS since it replicates waves moving across a natural reef. Well folks, that will do it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And if you are interested in purchasing affordable SPS frags that are pest free and homegrown, you can visit my SPS frag store. I will put a link in the video description below. I will also put a link to my new Reef Keeping Master Class, which is an immersive online class that provides a blueprint for success in this hobby. Many thanks. See you next time.